So the cryptocurrency market is on average worth a third of what it was back at the beginning of this year. The US and subsequently the majority of the rest of the world is now in a technical recession. And given the rate of inflation, the cost of living is increasing at a significantly faster pace than our average income. Now, while I'm no financial advisor, and this definitely isn't financial advice, it is of my opinion that the best strategy for long-term investing is to dollar cost average into the markets, which is what I've been doing with crypto now since roughly 2018. The amount that I've invested over the years has increased as my income has increased, and I've gone ahead and reorganized my diversification within the markets as my risk tolerance has lowered, given that the fact that I now have a family who rely on me financially. However, for many, dollar cost averaging into the cryptocurrency markets, or in fact, investing in the cryptocurrency markets at all right now, could be an incredibly bad decision. In this video, I want to go through the things that I think you should do or ensure you have before investing any more money into the cryptocurrency markets right now. Because let's face it, any money you do invest, even into strong cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin or Ethereum, could drop another 60 to 70%. And are you mentally and financially prepared for that? Okay, with that out of the way, then the first thing I believe you should do before investing any more money into the cryptocurrency markets is ensure that you have a solid emergency fund. Yes, I know I sound like Dave Ramsey, but believe me, an emergency fund is going to be essential to ensuring that you are mentally and financially prepared for your investments to drop further. Now, how much should be in your emergency fund is a personal choice, depending on your current situation. Most advise between six and 12 months of living expenses. And given that the cost of living is increasing month after month, it is ideally recommended right now that you do go for 12 months instead of six. Now, if you don't know how much your living expenses are, then you're gonna want to go ahead and figure that out. The number may actually surprise you. Now, I use some budgeting software called YNAB. Seriously, it's life-changing. I nerd out on this stuff as much as I nerd out on crypto. So if you do want to go ahead and check out that app, I'll leave my link down in the description. It is an affiliate link for you to go ahead and check out. Now your emergency fund should be saved in an easy access account. So you have access to the money quickly, should it be required. While once again, I'm not a financial advisor and this isn't financial advice. I do think it's safe to say that we'd all agree your emergency fund should not be kept in a stable coin or or protocols with high yields because we've all seen how that can go ahead and turn out. Now, what you spend your emergency fund on and when you spend it may vary once again, depending on your personal circumstances. If you've gone ahead and lost your job, then you might use your emergency fund for your living expenses until you go ahead and find a new job. If your car breaks, then you might choose or have to use your emergency fund to help you buy a new one. Personal finance is exactly that, it's personal. So it's really up to you to make the right choice or more importantly, the best choice for you and you your family. Now, once you've gone ahead and you've got an emergency fund together and you know your living expenses, you can go ahead and get real about your investing strategy. However, before we do, let me just remind you that you probably should not be investing in cryptocurrency or in fact investing at all if you have high interest debt. Again, I'm no financial advisor, but I don't believe in investing if you've got credit card debt or star cards. This to me personally, and again, you might be different, isn't the same as a mortgage on your home car repayments and student loan debt, although that's because I'm based here in the UK and student loan debt and student loan repayments are slightly different from those in the US and I believe Canada. Now, you may quickly find from your living expenses that you have no money left over at the end of the month to invest into anything, crypto, savings accounts, you name it. In that case, you shouldn't be spending time investing and instead you need to start thinking about how you are going to increase your income so you can go ahead and make those investments happen in the future. While in my opinion, it is much easier to increase your income than it is to decrease your spending, you should look at both sides and be realistic as to where you could cut back if you need to. It might also be time to look at switching jobs, looking for a promotion or starting a side hustle or even just simply 
cutting back on eating out. Now, by this point, you've got your emergency fund and you've got money that you are able to invest. And therefore, it's time to start looking at your existing net worth and where that money currently lives. Go ahead and pull up Excel or Google Sheet and list out all your assets. This is everything from your home's value, your car's value, cash in the bank, retirement accounts, etc. Is that money where you want it to be? Are the numbers in that sheet or on that sheet what you want them to be? From here, you're going to want to consider what numbers you want to see in that sheet and when. This is going to be the foundation to your investing strategy, not just in cryptocurrency, but as a whole. Now, for me personally, cryptocurrency makes up between 5 and 10% of my net worth, depending on where the markets are at that given time. Now, when I first started investing into cryptocurrency, that number was actually closer to 2%. But as my confidence in my cryptocurrency education has grown over the years, so too has my portfolio. Now, depending on your net worth and your risk tolerance, you might find that you're the same or different as me. And that is completely fine. So once you've gone ahead and you've got your percentage of your net worth that you want to go ahead and invest or maintain investing into cryptocurrency, it's time to start deciding what cryptocurrencies you want to invest into. Now, I split this cryptocurrency category into three different groups. Group one, the foundation. Group two, the growth. And group three, the gamble. Now, the foundation is the two largest cryptocurrencies by market cap, Bitcoin and Ethereum. They make up the largest portion of my portfolio and they tend to reflect the cryptocurrency market overall. I dollar cost average into these two cryptocurrencies, no matter what, with the same amount of money every single month, which may be adjusted on an annual basis, depending on my income and my overall portfolio diversification in order to go ahead and get that number or that percentage to where I need it to be. From there, there's the growth group. Now, these tend to be cryptocurrencies that are in the top 100 by market cap, and this tends to represent around 35% of my overall cryptocurrency portfolio. Cryptocurrencies currently in my portfolio that fall into this group include the likes of Cake, Doge, Sand, Shiba Inu, and Mana. Now, I expect these cryptocurrencies to grow a lot in the future with altcoin seasons, etc., but they do come with a lot more risk than the likes of Bitcoin and Ethereum do. Finally, then there is the gamble group. These are unsurprisingly the most risky cryptocurrencies in my portfolio and make up the smallest portion. While this is the gamble group, I still ensure I'm investing responsibly and doing as much due diligence as possible when it comes to each of these investments. Some examples of cryptocurrencies that I have right now in this group include the likes of Hex, GMT, Rise and BitGert. I invest in these cryptocurrencies as a one-off rather than dollar cost averaging and I go ahead and I take profits regularly given the risk involved. This profit is then either put back into my higher two groups or reinvested into new cryptocurrencies in this gamble group, again, depending on where the market is as a whole and where my portfolio is at that time. Now, because of this financial foundation, I've gone ahead and I've set myself, binding myself by these rules and ensuring that I have an emergency fund because of my thought out investing strategy, not just in cryptocurrency, but overall, I'm really able to check the cryptocurrency markets as and when I wish to do so. And if I see a negative number, I kind of just shrug my shoulders and get back to my day. It doesn't consume any mental space. Investing is no longer emotional for me. Of course, that wasn't always the case. I have learned a lot of expensive mistakes, but I found what works for me. I've set up this investing program for myself and now I'm able to invest for the long term, regardless of where the market is and without the need to draw on my investments for my daily living expenses. Again, I'm no financial advisor, but I do highly encourage you to do the same or at least similar, at least figure out what works for you and get a good understanding as to your financial picture right now and where you want that financial picture to be in five, 10 or even 20 years from now. With all that, like the video, subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys in the next one.